It would be easier if I remember to unmute my microphone and actually have like everything prepared before I actually click this ready button, but I'm not going to do that, am I? I've never been known to do that on time. I'm not going to do it now. Anyway, I'm back. It's been a while. I guess I end I realized recently that I've, I've casted more on Plasticine's channel than my own. As of late, I'm like, I should probably do stuff on my own channel, right? So here we are with a Division B East game, which I've decided to leave a lower K on e lower cap lowercase capital letter on East because that's definitely going to annoy people more than it annoys me. Despite me now just going, man, I really want to change it. But we're going to have a good series, I have been told. Finsad and by Forget Boys, I do know at least one person on both these teams. <laughs> on each team respectively so yeah it should be a good series so without further ado i'm gonna open things up but we do see it is gonna be cursed hollow to start which thank god it's not infernal shrines it always seems to be infernal shrines just not this time uh to note bands we do see that it is going to be I want to that down slightly. No, I'm not going to. Uh, we do see that it is going to be the Braxis Holdout and Dragonshire Band. Really? Fensad not trusting the offlaner here. Jesus. And on the other side of things, we do see Battlefield Eternity and Alterac being banned out. So, no two lanes. Thank God no Alterac, because I find that one boring. And I haven't seen a film shrines yet, so I'm happy. Very sad about Dragonshire, however. So, I'm just... Oh, my, and they're the wrong way around. Of course. Why would the teams be on the right side? Why would the teams get it right the first time? That is always my question. So let me jump on into the game. Let's see how this goes, shall we? Also, hey, I hope you're doing well today. And yeah, this button. And I forgot to hide that. So, on the side of Buy for Cat Boys, we have Sir Noble on the Joanna Taldran. Taldran is going to be on the Li Ming. Shamhat Ufa, Gokwe is on the Greymane, and rounding things out is Sailor Twift on the Dahaka. On the other side of things, we do see Hirobi, Deathwing, Psycho is going to be on the Diablo, who looks very small compared to Deathwing. Uh, we also see Jazzy Fast is going to be on the Anduin, Ruglord Blaze, and rounding things out is CW Ender on the. Um, Falstad, man, I sometimes really forget heroes' names just look at them blankly. I really need to be better at that, but no, I'm not going to anytime soon. God, why is it always as soon as I start? I'm like, oh, people are now. <laughs> people are now missing me as soon as I start. But yeah, a little scuffle at the start. Not really too much happening. Yeah, we just got a very passive passive game so far. Just a little bit of slapping Sir Noble getting pushed, but I don't think they're in any trouble. Yep, we do see Iron Skin, so they are able to waddle away. Well, the Harker gets a nice tongue on Rug Lord top. We see Taldrin already starting their camp. Gokwe coming to help, and we know that Greymane is one of the best campers. Yeah, this very passive setup so far. Everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. They're not really too fussed about fighting, except bottom. This is just a bunch of fighting bottom. A little bit top, but Sailor Tift and Rug Lord taking. About, you know what, this is probably one of the few times I can just watch the offlane so while I'm doing things. Oh, well, Robbie's up here now. No, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the Harker is a bit easier time clearing, or at least Hirobi takes a lot of damage whenever it happens. And yeah, we can see they do start to breathe and just have to back up. Meanwhile, mid, we can say Gokwe is starting, and a whole blue team of Buy for Cat Boys is going to start opening up this structure because they had the Bruiser camp there a little bit ago. Uh, that's a dead dog. Nope, that's a good roll from Gokwe, but can he get all the way around? There's the oil 
Shamhat gets the heal onto the Grey Main, so the Grey Main gets to live. And we do have first objective coming up bottom. You see Psycho is in position already. But yeah, everyone's like, oh, Sinnoh has found Psycho. <laughs> nice. We're already at level 6s, by the way, so level 7 is coming up very shortly. We can see False Stars staying up top because they do have that ability to use, utilize their global. We can see, meanwhile, Hirobi Ruglaw getting a decent amount of push. Mid. But no, we can see everyone's just going to try to push them out. Sailor Twift dodging Ruglord, just hooking to the left, meaning the blaze can't hit. Yeah, oh. I was saying, yeah, that's really all that happens there. We do see Diablo charge Taldrin into the wall, but really not much else happens outside of that. Why making me ping? Let's go Noble. You say let's go Noble right as Noble gets charged into wall. Ekta, is that really how you're going to be treating them today? It's a bit rude, ain't it? Alright, Psycho just being chased a little bit. We can see everyone except for Globals have come down. Foul start to Hakara top. That is going to be Cataclysm used, and we can just see everyone back up. Bifurcat Boys doesn't necessarily want to fight into the lava itself. Tildren getting a little bit too aggressive there, but doesn't quite get rude. Jazzy fast hit that. That may have been a very different story, because Psycho would have been able to get the actual charge itself. Just a thing to note here is very much Fensad are relying on their setup and their lockdown to get a lot of their damage done. Between... Deathwing doesn't exactly have the fastest wind... Deathwing has a wind-up time for their abilities. That's probably the best way to put it. They can't just do the damage. They need a one to go in that regard. So they need those abilities to hit, otherwise they're not going to get the consistent damage off. Because otherwise Falstart is always in the opposite lane. And we can't see if they're going to be halving, by the way. But I imagine both of these are... Quote, offlaners, end quote, do have their mobility up, their globals up. Early boss call by the team, literally on the five minute mark. Not often you see it being done at the five minute mark, but they have a means to burn it down, so why not? Dark is seeing if they can run interrupt. No, they cannot. But while this boss is happening, they're losing mid. Like, Hirobi and Ruglord have done well to open this up already, but they are going to be able to continue to open up. And now we can see one boss already coming out. The other boss is being started, but this has done a lot slower for Fensav and Bifo Cat Boys to do their own. Oh, Ruglord's a little bit out of position. We have a Seeker hit going off. Ruglord now being chased down, and this may even be an invade coming up over here. Yeah, more is playing this game, so they can vote for the lads. I was on the team. Fair enough. I never, I never, I never uh, vote for more. I always believe she'll lose. <laughs> She's mean to me, I'm mean to her. Got Quake going into a little corridor. It's going, actually, I don't want to get My stream just, my game just froze, I should say. But yeah, they just, oh. Yeah, it's back on up. Why is, I don't know why recently, but this game has been freezing a little bit more for me as of late. More is hacking your computer. Yeah, because you're not on the game and I'm talking smack. That sounds about right. Uh, keep in mind that it is going to be the third objective up for the side of Finsad. So they can, if they get it, they're in a pretty good spot. But I don't think the side of a... Uh, but I forget if boys really care all that much. They probably should a little bit, but tens are available for both teams as a side note. So they're not talents. We can see that Ender is heading towards the objective. So that will just happen. Apoc combo coming out a little bit off time. So Gokwe didn't quite get it by full sun. And there we can see the Divine Shield coming out. And that is a curse in favor of Ben's sad, but I don't think Bifo Cat Boy scares. They care a little bit. Ooh, Jesse Fast takes a little bit of orbs to the face, but they do heal themselves up immediately. So yeah, sure, they get top during this time, but because of the objective, they're going to be losing a fair chunk more. Ender does need to be aware that everyone's coming down for them, and they are potentially going to be overstaying their welcome. And Ghost Bolt used, but didn't quite find anyone. The wave itself is going to get the finish. Sailor Twift now trying their best to clear out the wave as well, but that building is again slowly falling. Nice charge. Ender appearing out from nowhere from behind. Swift. 
uh, Twift. But that was adaptation popped, and they do heal up off of it. Good tongue. CW Indy has to use Roll Tildren coming down now. Orb coming through, isn't quite finding one. Gust away. But that is a falling sword to get back on top. Ender getting hit by it, and that's them going down. Mule on top. Deathwing is doing his own work, by the way, but the fight is going to continue on down here. That's a light one coming out. That is just the Lee Ming getting all the attention. Cleanse came out a little bit too late, unfortunately, from Sham Hat, so that is going to be Lee Ming going down. Meanwhile, on top, we can see Gokwe use that cursed bullet directly on top of the Deathwing. So Deathwing is flying out safely. Hirobi not really wanting his tick around. This building really is just like a few hits away from going down. Realistically, you throw Felstar down here, get a quick Q, or even just drop the Meteors on top of it if you're Deathwing, and that's going to be bad. Yep, here it is. One Q from Rocklord. Whoa. If a crossfire was hit, that's probably something to note, but yeah, it's still the building going down. Because yeah, sure, while Bye for Cat Boys got both the um, bosses up, they're actually the ones down structures because they have just given away the objectives itself. The objectives were just kind of haphazardly handed over. What is going to happen next, I guess, comes the question. But yeah, I wasn't expecting Falling Sword. I guess I opened up the talents, but never actually took an active look at them, because other things to know is, uh, Curse Bullet, Divine Shield, and Wave of Force. I'm looking at Joe's talent, completely forgetting what's called Falling Sword and Adaptation. Also, side note, this is getting carefully pushed again. Um, on the other side of things, we do see it's Bunker, Gust, Bellowing, Roar, Light Bomb, and the Apocalypse. Yeah, they're just gonna hard push top. Like, I'm I'm curious what buy for cat boys plan is, just because they're giving up a lot of structures for free almost. Cause yeah, by the time we see them rotating up, this building is already essentially done. A little bit off for Roby staying around a little bit longer. Oh, stun coming out in psycho, but everyone's here a little bit too late as we can see Greyman dealing with mid as apocalypse out. Oh, charge coming out from Psycho. We see the flip. Shab hat honestly is going to be fine. However, Gokwe diving onto CW Ender. Ender's like, wait a minute. I don't feel comfortable about this anymore. Gokwe, however, needing to back off his rug ward. Doesn't quite hit their charge. They expected the dog to back off, but they did not. Yeah, that is... Really just going to be getting back into things. Also, I want to note that despite the structure advantage for by uh, Fence Hair, there is definitely a uh, experience. The experience is exactly the same. Also, nice Divine Shield once again. Sham has been very on with these Divine Shields this time. And that is a lot of stun coming out on Stern Noble, but because of the overlap, it doesn't really matter too much. And Hirobi now is a little bit out of position and going to be chased down, forced out. But they have 40 armor at the end of the day, so it's not the easiest to kill. Bosses are up, so I imagine I know where people are going to run at again. Also, CW Ender did just use Fly to get bottom. And now we can see Ruck Lord a little bit caught out. Nice tongue cancelling the charge. And that is now a very surrounded blaze. They do drop Bunker, but I don't know how easily they get out. Oh, the oil was very good for them. And that's actually them getting out. Boss, by the way, isn't as good an option, I've just realized as... It could potentially be, just because we do see Gust is, av is available in a few moments for Felstad. Now you know they're doing their own how well, now we can see they're doing it, we can see a trade. And, great main dive in. Yeah, there it is. Is this boss really going to go down? They're going down pretty much at the same time, but considering this was started later and there were fewer people on it, that's very impressive for By Forget Boys to basically be, there, be done with it at the same time. We see there are pings coming out onto this camp. That is a nice flip. Oh, the stun onto Lee Ming. And Lee Ming, once again, goes down quite quickly. She has full Q build, I want to think, no, with Cannoneer. So it's not like she's glass cannon. It's not like she just randomly dies for whatever reason. Also, nice charge by Rugwall, by the way. Bunker next to. Psycho, but Psycho barely gets into the uh, 
bunker in time, but that is not saving them. They go down to the end. Falstar, meanwhile, does give the objective. Gusts everyone back in, barely hitting Shamhat. Nice tunneling claws, but they do dodge their own heal. It's heal, however, very unfortunate. So Noble does put away from the rest of the team, and it's just going to drag everyone down with Drag the enemy team down with him. And we can see now that boss finally gets that bottom fort. However, push and keep, there is going to be... I'm remembering the <laughs> Just the gr Grave Terror? Grave Shamble? I can't recall. It's just going to be pushing. I'd love to see the Gust. Yeah, Gust. Nearly worked out. Just didn't quite get up here. We can already see that Fensad is set up for the objective. Hirobi sitting in a very aggressive spot for it. Psycho a little bit more passive. Meanwhile, but there is camp being done. It looks like once again there is no intention for buy for cat boys to go to these objectives. Because now we can see all four people here. Psycho already channeling it. They already have it, and that's now two objectives, two objectives. But keep in mind, buy for cat boys has already given over a single object, an objective, an actual curse phase before, and it did backfire. So I think they need to be a bit more ready to go to the next objective albeit that is not going to be the easiest time for them <laughs> Falstad just keeps walking up going yeah the wave will fall I love I love seeing it just like wait a minute where's my wave and we can see Sailor Twift in behind just like hurting the wave keep in mind it is a little bit closer to 20s for the side of been said for buy for cat boys but cw ender has their flight interrupted and that is now the opening that buy for cat boys wants to get on these objectives oh joanna's caught out the iron skin falling sword to get out i don't think it was necessary you could probably go back around the other way but ultimately it is fine it's better just to use it then like that than it is to die. You can't guarantee to get out if that, in that case. Oh, it's been about getting out. I don't know if Jazzy can. Light bomb hitting. Nice dodge of the tongue. But I don't know if you can live much longer if you're Jazzy fast. No, they indeed go down. I mean, obviously, Greyman just getting bottom objective. Wait, no, it's definitely stalling it. Okay, guys, you need multiple people to channel it and not that close to give it. Literally, Deathwing's about to interrupt all three of them. No, he actually ran out of orbs. My curse upon you. I just want to note that is Sailor Twift going back to deal with things. We do have 20s online for both teams, by the way. It is going to be that, um... I can never remember what it's called. Ultimate Evolution. Change of Survival. Falling Sword has the... Upgrade on it. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. Either Heaven's Fury, we do see Repulsion. Oh, my favorite Ufer Talent as well. Nice D shield there. The ending that Greymane is able to do because of some damage. Unfortunately, Got Quake doesn't quite hit the Cursed Bullet. But they aren't going into that full bullet thing. They are just going to be Hunter's Thunderblast. So we can see that splash damage doing decent, <laughs> decent amount of work actually on the people standing behind the structures. Charred on the wall. Sa Sailor Twift really just stuck in the same place the whole time. Now go quick going in on Hirobi. The dragon, by the way, has gone burn beneath my shadows at level 20. Oh, stood in the fire, sorry, at level 20, so it's different. So definitely an upgrade to the ult. Otherwise, we see wind tunnel. Bunker, but we'll skip back into that after this. As we see, it is going to be a lot of damage coming out of Gokwe, but that unstop. Meaning the great man can just keep going, and they are testing Hirobi. Gusted further in after their roll. So Hirobi now is like, wait a minute, there's a dog right here that I don't want to deal with. 90 health left on the great man. Great man gets the lid. Meanwhile, Sailor Twift doesn't, may not have the same luxury. This is a tongue on CW Ender, and that is now going to be a root stun. Stun. Poor Sailor Twift is stuck here for a while, but they have a 50 spell armor, so they're not going to go down. And now they can back out. They have a choice of what to do. Keep in mind, Deathwing is in the air and healing currently, so they have a little bit of time. Hi, Melville. Hope you know And Vario, I think I forgot to say hi to you as well. So, hello. Hope you guys are both talking about. Look who's online. I know, sometimes I do actually cast on my own channel. I don't just cast on Plasticines. 
weird, I know, it's been a few weeks, but it is something I'm like, oh, I've just called out. I've called out um, other people for not uh, streaming. I should probably do it myself. And bosses are going to be traded out once again very quick by Fintab, uh, by for Cat Boys. Fintab not too far behind, but they do need all their heroes there to really get it done in any as quickly as four members out of a five for the other team. Oh look, they're about to check Cap. Unfortunate. Oh no, is Psycho going to be fine? There's a lot of slow of them. Curse bullet. One thousand health left on that. Diablo is still, so they're going to be fine. Now we can see bosses marching onto both sides. So, <laughs> sorry about that. I just didn't beat myself in time. Nice time by Sailor Twift. We can see the boss getting the stun afterwards, but Animal with the ball. Doesn't matter. Greyman, Greyman, auto attack was chasing afterwards. Changes survival. Sailor Twift ending up back on full. And now we have five members and a relatively healthy boss pushing the core of Ben Sad. Nice tongue on to Psycho, but as a second pull used, both pulls down. Diablo charge, or well, we actually placed Diablo charge onto the Taldron, but they're able to get out safely enough. This core is going down, the boss is still at half health. I don't know if by if Ben second of Ember sometime, they do lose blades. It's definitely not something they can defend in time, and that is the first map of the series. Going over the side of by for Cap Boys. Good start for the team. Let's update the score first. Da, 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 one. And now we can go to the game summary screen. Uh, good damage by Greymane. Good he hero damage and Siege. Maybe actually have the top of their team. Darker wasn't too far behind, but Tahaka also did have 17,000. Soak, roughly the same as Blaze. Blaze, by the way, having most Siege in the game with 140,000. Deathwing having the most hero damage on the team with 46,000. Healing numbers, a lot of damage had just come in quick, so Anduin couldn't, wasn't able to always heal it all, just because it was a stun train where someone can, would die if they got caught out. And we can see that happened a lot to Diablo and Falstar, just if they got caught, they died. Uh, Ufa, meanwhile, 58,000, they had a little bit easier time, but is that burst, inherent burst protection as well. Uh, otherwise, I really like Divine Protection on Ufa a lot. 50 armor is just insane under most circumstances, and you don't really have... I guess Ender is about the only thing that can easily chunk through that, but that's not the bit considered the best. Uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Percent damage shell. There's definitely some very good ones. That's it. Also interesting, we see auto, uh, Cubo Diablo, so minus armor with malevolence, can do a lot, but didn't really pay off for Psycho there. They did end up with 30,000. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of damage for a tank. But I do wonder if other builds are probably still a bit more effective in that regard. So let me go back to the map view screen and see what we have next. As I'm going to have a quick drink of water and get the next one ready. I realize clicking mute to score button does not work. I actually mute myself in OBS. Right, I'm back, chat. Sorry about that. Looks like we are going to Towers of Doom next, which I almost forgot to do in here. Now I can open up in here. Yeah, Towers of Doom is a map I do enjoy. Ekdar's going to be back to supporting Then Sad by the looks of things, as they do have Grismore back. Just in the healer role, and that's real. I find it so weird after seeing her do damage for so long to see her in the heal role. Heroes. But hey, we'll have to see how it goes. So let me swap on into the game, shall we? 
So, starting with Finn Sad this time, we do see that more is going to be on the Anduin just surviving in base. Taking this sweet, sweet time to actually get out there. There we go. Well done, more Good for you. See you join the team. Ruglaw Blade Psycho is going to be on the Joanna. Jesse Fast. Bowman. Bowman. Bow Brother. Not Genji Hanzo. And Hirobi is going to be on the Cassia. On the other side of things, it's going to be Shamhat Right Wing. Taldrin leaming once again. Gokwe is on the Artanis. Sir Noble on the Anubrak. And rounding things out, it's going to be Sailor Twift on Dahaka. So obviously Dahaka is going to be double soaking these things. It'll be interesting to see what talents are picked. We got actually a more tankier variety of Artanis. Interesting choice to see that. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to be very... I'm very curious how it's going to turn out does deal pretty well with the auto attack hanzo it's actually a lot of damage that you can eat with that 50 uh, 50 physical armor so that will be fun to watch and that in terms of stacking we do have the brush talker talent on the harker so more recent skip they're faster they go for bushes psycho getting swapped in it does scare him a little bit does actually do a little bit of damage but we do see it's a light well and when actually healing things up i know more does like her light well but You know what? I know better than to judge more like that. Actually, more you should have dodged that swap, in all honesty. As we see, she is taking a lot of damage, but the team is doing their best to peel for her, but it's not going to be quite enough. It is enough. Psycho doing a lot to save him, and actually we see Anubrak going down for their Cuberus. More finding the final hit, and now we see Okwe, Shamhat, Taldrin, all relatively low as they're focusing down the healer. Ah, I think so. It's auto attack Hanzo. Already halfway done with stacks. Six out of the twelve required, and eight on Cassia. Not quite getting the hits they need yet. Oh, they are chasing Tardrum, though. Nice blink dodging the Q. I think Tardrum got too greedy for the globe. Does get hit by the spear, but is going to be fine. You can see Tardrum's already leaning back into that full Q build by the looks of things. I don't know if that's always a play, but it's definitely fun to watch. Q just peppering it down. Yeah, and we're just gonna hit bottom. Nice. Good patience. See, this is where I felt thought we are gonna see amateur opponent from Gokwe, just see if they can uh, yoink some camps. But no, we're not going to. Also, it's gonna be orbit level four, so we're maybe looking at potentially an orb or a hybrid calamity main, but we'll find out. Oh, Jesse Fast, just outside of her range of swap. So they're gonna be fighting also nine stacks from them, so we're nearly done with their quest for now. And, uh, yeah, that's really the only other thing to note is Subdue coming at Joanna for. No piercing light from the Anduin, but they have gone the auto attacks on the end of their W. Also, Ikta, you need to teach more how to run with scissors. You need to teach her to <laughs> make sure she's always holding the sword out front, running around, riding the horse, no matter what. Ooh, Shamhat just going to phase shift to the team, just to make sure they're safe. And that is also auto attack quest complete from Hanzo three minutes in pretty strong stuff and the amount of time that Sailor Twift is taking here they may be able to see Rug Lord running interference here and that looks like it may be the case no they're just gonna go back to soaking but bottom is given over to the side of Ben said they don't really want any more stacking to happen anytime soon Psycho getting tickled a little with an arcane missile. Magic missile? Arcane missile? It is magic missile, right? I'm not... Arcane... Arcane missile, I think, is D&D. Jazzy Fast taking a lot. Oh, the swap hits from Gokwe, and that's Jazzy Fast going down. Right. He's got more quests to do. Nice stun by way from the... From the Bifer Cat Boys, Sir Noble, and... Dahaka doing a lot of CC, and that means... More is dead. Good. <laughs> Hurt more. <laughs> she hasn't given me enough shit recently. I need, I need this. I need her to give me more shit. It is vegetable, so yeah. I, I've been playing a lot of um. What? Where? Why has it been that I've been calling it arcane missile? Why am I calling it that? What am I thinking of? Because I think it's magic missile in D and D as well. I don't know where I'm getting this from. But I am getting it from somewhere, so I'll figure it out one. I'll figure it out one day. 
Vision coming out. Camp is available soon for the side of Finsad, by the way. Uh, for by Cat Boy's side, by the way. Finsad already on VR1. Goatquay is coming back forward about. Oh, we can see in VR. We can see in VR. Tennis is like, maybe go in. W's Arcane. That's maybe one. I'm getting mixed up. <laughs> Magical of an Arcane Missile. Arcane Missile doesn't even sound right. The more I say it, it sounds worse and worse. Also, welcome, King Andrew. Hope you're doing well today. Cycle clearing out. Camp hidden for minions. And it is just going to be a single objective bottom. But it is going to be. Halfstone, isn't that a mage guard? No, that, that's the, um, that's the game. Oh, barely outside of Gokwe swap range, and they are going to get it. Sir Noble going in just a little bit too late. Moore took a lot of damage in that process, though, however. Oh, that is going to be a pull out, and Jazzy Fastway took a lot of damage. Psycho is going to pop the iron skin, and that is going to be a double kill by Hirobi, taking out both the Brightwing and the Lee Ming. Gokwe is going to be fine. Nice pull by Sailor Swift. That is a good stun by Rugwall, meaning Hirobi's not getting hit. And that means, unfortunately, there is no range damage to reach over to get Hirobi. That they are going to get out safely. Oh. That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. For goodbye, Gokwe. Oh, 07. Sir Noble is going to get chased out as well. It is Arcane Missiles. Good. There we go. Hit, hit half stun. See, Chauncey is onto it. Dude, you're predicting me so hard right there. Yep, my son's dead. My son, Goatquake, dies once again. My poor son. But we can now see that it is going to be a continued siege of bottom. So both the cat boys potentially are going to be losing this in a few moments. One last tap, it will actually get it a decent chunk of way down. Yeah, if there's just a little bit more poke coming in there from Hirobi, they may have it. They may have it building right now. You really would want it for this objective as well, because you'd get a free five shots. We can see more is potentially considering going back and getting it. No, they're not going to. They just want to be up here, make sure they're fair for their team. My mouse is down here apparently on the screen. Also, on a quick note, isolation. It is also going to be cocoon, wave of force, suppression bolts, and blink heal. Brightwing on the other side of things we have, as we saw. It is the Paul the Valkyrie from Cassia. Bunker Blaze. Light Bomb Andowin. Dragon Arrow on the Hanzo, who does stall Tildren successfully and Blessed Shield Joanna. Oh, nice quad stun. Oh, nice quad stun once again. That is a lot of stun coming in out. Psycho needs to get pulled, however. And that is all she wrote for that fight. And did they complete Subdue there? No, they did not. They somehow didn't complete Subdue and all that. Nice tongue coming out onto Rug Lord. There's Cocoon onto Psycho. Tartan just slowly getting that orb poke in. Now we see more and leaves a nice little nice little campfire for Ruglord to heal by. Maybe more does actually care for Ruglord is what we're finding out. And more is gonna hate me for saying that sentence. Camps up again once once again by way. Fin said already on Viz. Actually the other siege still another 50 seconds off and was stolen last time. I'm surprised it just hasn't been that little bit of poke that Fin said needs just to take that bottom one. You don't really want to waste sappers. On taking that last bit of the tower, because what? It's like 200 health? 400 health? 500 health. Hmm, this does some few modes. There we go. And yeah, we can see they're slowly marching it up. There is a lot of room being given by Bye for Cat Boys, but they're down talents, they can't really afford to step up too much. And Jazzy Fast is actually just opening things up. Does have to jump out, and they are the mounted archery. Nice dodge on the light bomb. Blessed Shield doesn't find anything, but the Dragon Arrow does. The Prince Ball's directly on top of things. That is going to be a continued march, but everyone is out safely. The five man gambit for Bye for Cat Boys did not quite make it. Sham Hat gets hit. We can see that Gokwe is trying to peel, goes in. Oh, nope. That is going to be a new wreck going down, unfortunately. Hirobi doesn't quite hit the spear onto Sham Hat, but now themselves are in a rough spot. 30 armor, however, is a lot, and Tardrin gets stunned. That is going to be the avoidance taking out the Anubra, not Anubra, the Tahaka. The Space Yoshi goes down, got quite not long to follow, and that is going to be them. Take the a good free man kill for the side of Finset, and it means they're going to actually be getting 10 shots the into the core of... Oh, Lemix did. Rykel wanted had blood. But yeah, there's going to be 10 shots into the core of... But I forget, boys. And if they walk these sappers in, there's potentially 13. 
But they do see people are coming back up. We can see Sir Noble, Sham Hat, both already down here, ready to push back. But this, but those sappers are going to be pushing in. I'd like to see Joanna and Hans over here just to make sure they can get it in. But they are. Joanna just came back from Gore and Hans are now making their way down. Good defense so far. That's one sapper down, two sappers down, three sappers down. Unfortunately, Psycho just wasn't quite back in time. Nice route. Gokwe does a good old Q into a spray combo. Nice. Dragon Arrow finding only one this time. Sir Noble does get pulled by that as well, but that's just too much damage. A new Brack goes down. Unfortunately, a new Brack is probably the tank that needs to push his buttons the most. His defense is a very active defense of that Nerubian armor. Shell, I think it's called. And if you can't push that... If you can't use that carapace, if you can't use that armor, you do sometimes just die as an Uberak, and that was one of those instances where, you, yeah, an Uberak just kind of died. It happens. <laughs> Ult is coming up soon. This potentially is another. This potentially is an end for Finn Sad if this goes well. If they can get a solid wipe, great. If they can get. Especially, well, they can get two objectives and boss, or two objectives and, or three objectives. Both these ways is definitely an end, a way to end. And now Rugwall is realizing they're in trouble, does get swapped in by Gokwe. And we can see that there are a lot of people positioned bottom, but now they have to rotate back up. Shamhat already low, but Rugwall even lower goes down. Nice route onto Sailor Twiff. Grismore getting a triple, only a double actually, on that light bomb. And they took a decent amount of damage on their way back up. Roby now out of position, but there is... Joanna back now. Nice dragon arrow getting a helping with Trimman Summers. One, two. Good tunneling towards Sailor Twift, but that's free coming out now. That's very unfortunate. As we heard Sappers run in bottom, so they really are, Yeah, they're doing objective. Go quite holding on, but cannot hold on much longer as much as that armor can help. It doesn't always help. And we can see that it is gonna be Lemian going down last. Psycho getting the last few shots. It's only been one shot. Psycho getting the last shot. And that will be the second map series going on the side of Ben Sad. That's an outdraft. Potentially. I, I do think definitely Artanis is a weird choice, but it was the choice that was made. Let's go into game summary, though. Yeah, Hanzo just had such consistent damage that game. They were able to stack auto attack build early. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're able to stack auto attack build early, especially when there's a lot of frontline, it can hurt a lot. And we can see that was the case as auto attack build with Giant Slayer at 16 really started to tear frontline apart. There were some very good moments from the side of Bive Catboys, however. There were some good salts from Gokwe that did allow for kills to come off. But there were also just... Anduin pull really doesn't help Artanis' game plan. It's so good. You sometimes see like an absolute god swap. You're like, yes, excellent, got it. But then literally Anduin goes, no. And plucks them back to the safety of their own team. But yeah, that is all I really want to talk about talents. Nothing else stands out too much outside of this giant slayer. Interesting build by Tildren. It's not often we see Cannoneer if we see these other talents. But it can work. Do not get me wrong. Or more often not though you see it when you have Seeker at level 7. Uh, in terms of stats, 48,000 on Hanzo. In terms of hero damage, 31,000 Li Ming. So Hanzo absolutely doing work there. Well done, Chansey Fast. Blaze, 109,000 Soak. Compared to 99,000 of Dark. Uh, Siege, sorry. And Soak, we can see that was very... That was... That correlated. We can see 20,000 Soak by Blaze and 113,000 by the Dahaka. Healers, pretty close. 2k difference. Brightwing, Billy, uh, Healing, and win. Right. Let's go back to map view screen and see what map number three is. What do you think of this chat? God fucking damn it. I thought I'd escape. I thought I hadn't have to do it today. Who picked this map? I'm going to find out. Infernal Shrine, who picked it? Give me a moment, I need to find out. 
I know, I know I'm casting, but this is more important. Also, hi, Krizo. I don't know if I said about hiking, Andrew. Hope you're both doing well today. Who picked the map? Fin said picked the map. More, you swear to God. The only thing that lets me forgive you more is you're not actually playing the map, but... Fin said this is my bad book, so I just don't want to hear it from them. <laughs> I didn't realize doing this and casting this out of the goodness of my own heart, and here we are. <sighs> Fine. We're opening up the game. Pierce off a of battle heroes. <laughs> so on the side for buy for cat boys, we do have Ruglord on the. Wait, they swap back. They finally swapped to the correct sides. Ah. Uh... On the side of Finn Sad, we do have Jazzy Fast Brightwing Ruglord is going to be on the um. Leoric Psycho. Diablo, CW Ender Tigers, Nairobi Rounding Things out once again on the Deathwing. On the other side of things, we do have Sailor, Twift, Blaze, and Sir Noble is going to be on the Garrosh. Goat Quay is on the Brightwing. Shamhat. Stukov, as I just make the hand just to like putting the silence on the ground because I can not remember what it's called at the time. And Taldrin is going to be on the Tassadar. And Hirobi has been forced out of bush. One big thing to note, it is double mage for the side of... Then uh, not for buy for cat boys. See now they've swapped to the other side. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult if you remember. So yeah, they definitely have a lot uphill battle to work through. With this, as they won't have that consistent damage, so they very much this is a Sir Noble needs to execute their throws correctly each time. Otherwise, whoever gets thrown, I think, just gets to live. I don't know how they ever kill Hirobi. Hirobi, I think, feels very unkillable in this composition here. But it's definitely something that they will be able to, they should be able to do. I guess I should show you t talent, shouldn't I? Oh, Chris, oh, I hoped it was spiders, but... Go, Quay! My son, what are you doing with Hirobi? <laughs> but we do see camps are being picked up. Very quick camp take my way for Fintad. Already got this out. They're working on bottom one now as well. And, uh, <laughs> we just love... I know, I know Shrines is a fun one to play, but I do not have my counter up this season for how many times I casted it, but I wish I did. And that is another camp taken by Finsad. Finsad really cranking up these camps quickly. Just feels like a map they've played a decent amount at this point. Albeit, well, it's only played... I guess everyone's played it a lot. Yeah, we're just getting back to forward via talents, by the way, finally. Interesting we see fealty until death on the... On the... Leoric, this is probably one of the times you do want it. You are double soaking here, you do have more time to do so. Physical armor on the Stukov, by the way, so they are going to be watching out for a lot of damage. Works well for Ender, but I don't know if that is necessarily a good choice, because I think a lot of the damage is going to come from... Hirobi in the end on Deathwing, and even Ender does have that trait. It doesn't mean the physical armor from Biotic Armor really doesn't help in those circumstances all the time. And Gorkwe's gonna half before objective. Good siege camp push. Very low already, so Ruglord is just gonna bop. And it's dead. Jazzy Fast is gonna get soaked mid by the way. Mid objective is up, and it is going to be an Arcane Punisher. I think it's Arcane. Uh, 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 color. Not fully colorblind yet. Oh, charge coming up from Psycho. Sailor Swift going to wall. Rug Lord actually missed the creepy hand, so they're going to be fine. So there's not going to be any drain coming out there. And that's a lot of extra sustain for Ruglord gone. So Noble throwing them in the back line. But there's not really a follow up there for it. 
Tassadar are doing a decent amount of damage so far. It does put out the uh, wall, does get a minion. But this is definitely an objective that is in favor of Ben Sad currently. It is very hard for buy for cat boys to step on here, especially because one character alone is just not throwable at all. Nice double stun from Sir Noble, but they are going to back out. If they are, what are they at level 1? Slam. They only just hit 5 stacks, so they are getting up there. Nice Hourglass by Gokwe. Actually, I like that play. Sir Noble is absolutely putting their life in Gokwe's hands there, but I like it a lot. <laughs> it's Gokwe breaking things. No, Gokwe is not breaking things. Oh, so Noble taking a lot does W, but they're going to be fine. I guess there was, there was some instability in someone's game there. Like, apparently there is in my game. So they are just going to be able to back on out to safety. But no one went down at that time. Oh, Hirobi gets hit by the Q. I love that Q talent for Tessida. I love I love the uh, W at the end of the, on the Q if they hit someone. But I also go Q it one so it's a bit different how i play it taldrin just backing it up not really want to risk anything but i don't think that i think they just do their own camp instead they can't really invade at this point it's a lot to try and move off the objective and whoever just steps in big may just die even sir noble albeit garrosh does have armor tykus is a minigun and it makes uh it makes garrosh very squishy And the hourglass is destroyed. Wow, rude. Slowing sense now picked on Chromie, by the way, just to level 8. No, oh, Sir Noble just getting tossed around a little by some grenades. Nice cleave on the Q by Taldrin, forcing out her rope, but Jesse is going to be fine. And that is going to be 10 through first for the side of Ben Sad. We do see that it is going to be in two. Bellowing Roar, Blink Heal. Lightning Breath and Commandeer Odin, which you kind of expect it, which you do kind of expect when you see Master Assassin at this point. The other side of things, we do see Garrosh has gone Decimate, so we may even see Deadly Calm at 20. We also see that it is going to be Flailing Swipes, Flailing Sands as said before, Cooldown Bunker, and the Black Hole Tassadar. And Sailor Twitch has been thrown in. Nice charge. Good Quins by Jesse Fast. We see Hirobi is flying in over top. I'm going to have to close that and zoom on out because this is actually a very spread out fight. Lightning Bridge isn't quite finding anything, but that is a Rug Lord dropping bunker. Sham Hat taking a lot. Oh my god, the crossfire. That is going to be the. I can't remember his name anymore. Germ Spreader. The Germ Spreader going down. Very unfortunate for him. Sukov, that's it. But yeah, unfortunately a little bit of a misstep from Blaze there. Yep, thank you, Mario. <laughs> uh, it's very unfortunate there for Blaze. If he put the bunker outside the Entomb, he may have lived. And so may have, um... Oh, Blaze. Oh, sorry, Stukov may have lived, I should say. I should be more specific with who I'm talking about. Unfortunately, just, it happened to stay inside the bunker. And Psycho is going to reset for health. They are full souls, I believe. So they should... No, they're actually still not quite full yet, but they are in a very good spot. And Horobi's being spun at. W build this time on the other. We can see it's going to be a frozen punisher, so this is going to be a very important one for both teams. And Sailor Swift now having the Ender. Sorry, charge coming on out. You can see the creepy hand has been hit by Rug Lords. The Sailor Swift is just going to back on up. Got quite dropping and falling stance. So they are just going to be clearing out the wave, making sure they have a space. Keep on. Deathwing's in the air. Deathwing is technically at this fight, and he does drop now. And turn finding just Sham Hat. Sir Noble actually getting Sham Hat out of a bunker himself. I do like where Sailor Swift dropped bunker this time, by the way, it did actually help the team get out. Oh no, Bunker had to be Bunker had to be in the end last time he just had to jump out of the side. 
There's Lightning Breath coming out from Diablo, but Diablo does get the heal off. It isn't going to be the strongest Lightning Breath yet. They don't have that 13 yet. They don't have the extra spell power coming. We see Stukov going down first. Tigus really finding his target well. Rug Lord taking a lot. Sir Noble does finish him off. Everyone's being forced out. Tardrin getting tickled by the Molten Breath. But it's not going to be fun. Got after after playing a decent amount of games again recently, I really want I really want to get good at um Chin. Chin has been really fun to play, but I'm still just making some dumb decisions on him. I know I know there's no Chin here. I want to see a Chin played. Outside of I think I casted one Chin match last season. It was like a main tank elusive brawler Chin, which was really weird. Man, Chin is one of those ones that's actually really fun and can fight really well given the situation. So Noble did not get jumped onto that side. And we see actually getting jumped is going to be Goku down bottom. So Noble unable to get anyone there that time. The Sans just clearing from Chromie. Oh, hi Punisher. Goku just getting hit out of nowhere. I guess that's more Randy Orton than John Cena, though. Check out one of the recent Raven Court games. Max Passion. I don't know who Max Passion is. <laughs> I like seeing the four-man different comps. Yeah, there's been two four-man different comps this match so far. Oh, that's a Soulstone Reese on Diablo. I'd have to have a look at it, Chauncey. I haven't really seen much of Raven Court because I think that more or less goes when I'm still asleep. <laughs> Just because um, I, I think there's a big time zone difference when it comes to me, yeah. EU. Yeah, that, that's the problem. EU is the opposite to my schedule whatsoever. It is midnight for me. It is midday for them. It's not really an OTP, which is really routine. Oh, yeah. Kind of like um, Champion of the Horde and NA's. Just like, he's not really a Rexar one trick, but he plays a lot of Rexar and he's very good at it. Oh, Ender throws a grenade, doesn't quite find it. Oh. We really do see a lot of Herobi and Ruglord just choosing to run thing down at times, and it is really to the detriment that Fire for Cat Boys is lit is uh not really reactive to it so far. They have let it happen quite a few times. In both this map and in previous maps. So no, we're looking to the camp. No, but they just respect they're putting giving Fensad a little bit too much respect in terms of space. Oh, I wonder where the dragon's hiding. <laughs> no one quite there. Lime, since EU is not the other side of the world, have you ever coordinated with someone where you both put in peace of freedom? I would need to find someone specifically in Spain. I would. <laughs> Chauncey, I have no clue where you are. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> but yeah, um, I need to find someone in Spain specifically because that is technically the ant. Anti pole from me. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely a rough one when it comes to being in the wrong place. That's why I don't always. I'm not always able to cast things live, which is why I'm always happy to cast replays. Which I should probably say, replay cast always sounds so weird. Let's change the title. Sorry. Casting hot, casting hot switches in all world, sure. Oh, sorry, that is Diablo in trouble. Does get thrown further into trouble. The psycho is going to go down, but there's so much damage on to Sailor Twift and Sir Noble while this is happening. They're going to be anyway. Same kiss. And we can see that is this is actually going to be the first objective of a game where Buy for Cat Boys is actually getting a lead. More often than not, it has been behind, but for once, it has been in front. I need to check a few things. That reminds me. Definitely is just trying to get poked from the side. I love seeing him just go. I can get this right. Oh, 
Right, and that is going to be the objective. Slowly going for that, and yeah, more to punish it for by forget boys. But while that's happening, there is such a massive bush top coming up. I don't think Sailor Tooth can, can defend against two Sharma Camps, Comedy Odin, and a uh, percent damage. Is it percent damage? Yeah, W build on the Leor. Uh, they do actually defend the building. They do very well on it. They did manage to take... Actually, no, they haven't taken bottom. Just Psycho has managed to pull the objective all the way up to top. I'm looking wrong place, that's why. So we can see that finally goes down. And this actually did, was actually... They did actually manage to hold on to top. So good stuff from Bifon Catboys there. They did not quite let the team get away with it that time. Now, Voriel, I was about to... I, I want to ask you, Voriel, because you're here. I was looking at the matches that have been done. Because I do know I, you had requested a while back... Sorry, give me a moment, as I'm just going to actually have to move my camera over here. As there is a fight going to ask after this. That is Lightning Breath, that's Phase Shift, that is going to be Psycho being fine. Tildren stuck in there with Ruglord. But it's actually going to be Diablo going down first. Ruglord is being forced out. And they are going to be fine in the end. Oh! Throw on by Sailor Twins on the Rug Lord. Nice stun. That's him dead. B.S. Voriel, as I was saying. Uh, you did request a while back collecting countless stars versus Skelly, or CCS10 versus Skelly. Um, that match is no longer available. Do you want me to refund the points, or would you have me cast something else involving one of those two teams? Okay, I'd have to have, I'd have, to have a look later, Chauncey. Oh, Morton Breath coming out. Hirobi doesn't quite get anything with her. Because I know there is still a um, two template members collecting countless stars if you want to do that. But it's up to you. I can always refund you the points. If you want to have a look at yourself and just make a decision later. Sailor Twift backing on up. Sir Noble going for a slam. And this is going to back up. Safely. I love we're just playing ring around for Rosie. We're just going to make sure that no one quite goes down there wanting to be safe. But that is going to be a silence and tomb. And that's going to be a molten breath directly on top of Goat who goes down. No block there for them that time. No timeout, I should say. So Noble being ran down by Rugglaw, but we know he doesn't have the entomb this time, so he's able to get it. Goat Quay, no, has been called by Ektar. Ektar, did you really miss for one match of more and come back now? But yeah, I want to know. It's silence and tomb, it is going to be... All beneath wings. Hello. Hi, Erwin. I hope you're doing well. Much love to you as well. I did drop by your stream, but I'm just lurking in there still. Uh, also, one note Hell Gates. Speedy Dragon, actually, on Brightwing. Not often you see Speedy Dragons, more often not you see um, Berry Protector or uh, uh, Invisible Friends. But it's nice to see that one, but also it's rounding things out. Big red button. On the other side of things, it is deadly calm on the garage, which I thought was going to be the case. It does help deal with the Deathwing a fair amount. Um, that we do see it is going to be... You know, what's it called? Oh, I'm looking at Stukov's talents. I'm like, man, I really can't remember Stukov today. It is going to be Control Chaos. It is going to be the Piercing Sands Chromie. Fortified Bunker Blaze and rounding things out. It's going to be Forced Barrier on the... Tassadar, that's his name. Yes, let's love you, uh, that is a very stuck... Oh, no. Caught the... T the beams have been crossed, and that is going to be a very dead game. <laughs> you know what? Died there. He actually got to get the bunker and Limbian. But that's definitely a lot more damage than I would have liked. I definitely missed all that. Sorry, everyone. You can see Hirobi is going to be flying on. Sailor Twift, however, is going to be the first one to go down between the minigun of Tigers and just damage the CCS team versus OBJ from four days ago. The CCS team is... What team is CCS 10? That match has already been taken as well. So those matches have already been taken. The only one that hasn't been that is CCS 10 related is... Sorry, I have to go back to it as this is going on. 
So no positioning punch, by the way. I can tell you after this, but I'm gonna have to just keep focused for a little bit. Blaze is coming back another 20 seconds, so that is gonna be an issue. Oh, that's a force out. That is a jump directly on top of Sir Noble. Sir Noble is backing on up. But they are going to be fine. It doesn't have to be CCS10, by the way. And that is going to be the fort going down. Uh, collecting countless stars. They, the only match they haven't had casted yet is 210 Blakeman Street facing off against them. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I can refund you. Right. And that is going to be the team backing on up. Right, that refund will be going to you, so I need to do that one next. Waves being cleared up. You know, we can see bottom camp being taken by Finsad. Finsad really just looking to paint the map blue now. Camp being taken. Yeah, really well painting the map blue. Hourglass gets popped, but doesn't really have any major effect on everything. Did scare a little bit of people around, but no big fight coming on up. So I'm just having a look at everything. It's kind of, we're getting that kind of calm point where not too much is happening. Each team is like looking around, seeing where they can get in. But no team is fully committing to anything yet. I hear a lot of things happening. CEW Ender is going to be doing top camp by themselves. And we can just see we've got a scramble of defense coming through for Bifecat Boys. So just making sure that nothing is going to fall. Sorry about this, everyone. I what I'm doing after this. Two Tim Blakeman Rainbow Shrooms. Which is not available either. But we do see there's a lot of damage going up. That is going to be Psycho and Jazzy taking a lot of damage as he does get thrown out. But it is going to be the death of Tessida to start. That, most, that Lightning Breath keeps on going. It looks like an upgrade to it. And it was not. It was just Hellgate. It just really was just for full duration. So Noble and Sham Hat being forced out. Stop. Does hit. Sham hat is going to swerve around the corner. It's going to be fine. Meanwhile, it is going to be the blaze going down and Narnia back over here. And that is going to be the chase coming on out. And Ektar, I'm also going to be refunding your one because I don't see that available either. Red team's core is under attack. Will they be able to fend? A lot of damage, big stomp. That is going to be the. Te oh, not Tessadar. Tessadar is already down, but we can see that it is going to be Stukov and Garrosh going down. Really, this is the end of things. Things are falling. The core is being attacked. Psycho is taking shots, but it does not matter because it is a full soul stone on the, on the man himself. So, yeah, that is going to be that core falling, and that's going to be the game. And the series going over to the side of Finn's head versus Five for Cat Boys. So while that rounds up, let me go over to here, click this. Now that it's on the right side, go over to game summary screen. And yeah. GG's. Starting up talents. Starting up talents, anything that stands out to me in particular. Interesting on Chromie, we see Q build shifting sands. We see Q with W build, not often you see that. More often not, you'll see the on demand W just because that is just a quick burst of damage, and I think that's what the team needed, by the Boys needed into this, especially because they are playing off Garrosh a lot. If you're playing off a throw and you have double mage, you really need to get that quick burst, and that's the problem. They were double mage, and they didn't really full go into the burst. We can see Tassadar ended up picking up the percent damage on Q at level 16 after committing W build early on, but they weren't able to do much more than that. The other side of things was quite balanced. Tychus did a lot. Tiger's minigun can do a lot, as well as for Robbie to do a lot of damage. I imagine that'd be top of the game. First, oh, look, this is going to be Tessadar, Vin Chromie, 65, not 59, but Deathwing, 56,000, and Tiger's 37,000 just is a lot of single target damage. Because while 
Sham Hat did a lot to make sure people stay alive. He just couldn't quite do it. 72,000 healing from Vim. Meanwhile, 91,000 healing from Brightwing. So they did a lot to really save those single targets. 195k stock from Sailor, Sailor Twift, by the way, with 24,000 seat. Sorry, 195, yeah. With 24,000 soak, so 195,000 siege. 175,000 siege from Leoric with 26,000 soak themselves. So, a little bit more siege from Blaze, but Leoric did get more soak in the end. Alright, that is going to be the 2 1. So, it is a very good best of three at the end of the day. I am going to do a combination of what both Ekta and Voriel had wanted, and I'm going to refund a refund of Ember points. So I'm going to be doing two Tim Blackman facing off against Collecting Countless Stars next. So that will, so we'll be going Division D West. But let me change back on over to the map view screen just so we can see what happened. And I'm going to ping the teams while I remember. What division were they? Division D? Yes, Division D. Right, so yeah, it was a 2-1 at the end of the day to Finn Sad. Nice stuff done by them. Bifer Cat Boys did make a good effort. They did get map number one. But it did definitely feel like a hard-fought map number one where I wasn't entirely certain how that one was going to go. But they did make make it in the end. Did make at least one map in the end. So it was actually a pretty good series, but it was Finn Sad controlling at the end of the day. So they are going to look very strong coming into this later part of the season. But without further ado, I'm going to ping the two teams. Two Tim Blackman and collecting. So I'm going to go on break. I'm going to put on some music. I'm going to put on some ads so I can quickly use the restroom, get the next series sorted. But well played both teams. And I'll catch you guys on the other side of this quick. Now, if I remember to push my buzzer right, on this quick break. So be right back. Take care of all for now. If I remember where my music button is, I'm not doing great at this. <laughs> Sorry, chat. You get a little bit of uh, unscripted line for a moment while he remembers what the hell is music and where he can find it. There it is. Now I'm disappearing for a little bit. <laughs> 